Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. I want to welcome you to this very special moment of blessing. It's healing streams. So, God's Spirit is pouring out blessings all over the world right now. Right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we honor you. We worship you. Thank you for your love, for your grace, for your kindness. Thank you. There's none like you. Thank you for the life you've given us. Thank you for the scriptures. Scriptures of hope. Scriptures of truth. Scriptures of life. Thank you. They're all around the world right now. You're changing lives. Bringing them into a harmony with the Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you. I'm going to share a few thoughts with you. Especially understanding that there are many of you around the world who may not understand the purpose of healing. I've got a live studio audience here. Please be seated. Thank you. God bless you. Some of you may not understand the purpose of a, a program like this, an event like this. Even though you may want to be healed. Why is it so? What are we doing? You see, in the scriptures, God is very clear about his purpose and his plan for man. And when I talk about the scriptures now, I'm talking about the Bible. The Bible, the Word of God. There are many religions in the world. And many of them have books of one kind or the other. That they refer to as holy. But when we talk about God's Word and Scriptures... We're referring to the writings that concern Jesus Christ. And when you read the Christian Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's all in one theme. It's on the subject of Jesus Christ who he is and what he came to do. And when you study this Bible, you will discover some very beautiful things. First and foremost, that God actually created man. Man didn't evolve like many think. No. Man was created In fact, according to the Bible, the first mankind of God, understand the word man is a, a generic term. It's a generic term. It can refer to a person. It can refer to uh, the whole human race. 
It can refer to a gender, the male gender. It's a generic term. But the Bible shows us very clearly that man was created as the mankind of God, the first mankind of God was called Adam. And Adam really means red from the earth because he was, his body was made from the dust of the ground. So he was named after his, the, the, the source of his physical body. So everything about evolution terminated in the book of Genesis. As far as the human race is concerned, God said from this new beginning, because it's a new beginning in Genesis, He says, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So the mankind of God was created by God to look like God and to function like God. So whatever the evolutionary process was until the destruction that the Bible tells us about, because some of you may not know that, the Bible has answers to all the genuine Discoveries of science. And also to the mystery of evolution. It's got all the answers. But today would not be the opportunity or the, the, the time to explain all that to you in detail. But just to let you know it's coming from somewhere. And that all these things were taken into account in the Bible. And so when God created this mankind of God to look like him and to function like him, he had a reason. His purpose was to be together with man. I'll show that to you in the Bible in a second. His plan was to have man and himself form a kind of fellowship so that man would be a super being as he always, as God always intended. But you know about the fall in the garden the Bible tells us about. You know about sin and how sin changed all that. But Jesus fixed it. And here is the beautiful thing that the Bible tells us about Jesus. And why Jesus is so important. I'm going to read to you first from St. John's Gospel, chapter 20, beginning with verse 30 into 31. John, the writer here, summarizes this thought about the theme of his writing. And it flows through the whole book from Genesis to Revelation. Listen to his thought. Remember, Jesus performed lots of miracles, lots of miraculous signs. So he refers to that here. He says, and many other signs, many other signs, miraculous signs, truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. In other words, in his writing, in the scriptures, we've got a catalog of miraculous things that Jesus did. In fact, before proceeding with this, let me show you something else, how he concludes it. In chapter 21, same book, go to verse 26, 25. 25. Let me show it to you. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Can you imagine that? 
He says that Jesus did so many other things that were not written. And that if they should have been written, he says, I suppose that the world will not even contain the books that should be written. And that is no exaggeration. So there are many things that Jesus did that were not written. All right, so let's go back to chapter 20 and verse 30. And truly, it says, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Look at the next verse. But these are written, the ones that are written, were written for a reason. It says, these are written that he might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing he might have life through his name. This is the purpose. The reason these things were written is that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Christ means the anointed one, sent from God, full of God. That's the meaning of this anointing. It means that Jesus was full of God. It means that God tabernacled in Jesus, which means when Jesus walked this earth, when Jesus lived in this world, when you saw Jesus in the streets, it was God Almighty in a human body. And that the work of salvation that Jesus carried out on the cross was actually God doing that work in Jesus. Let me show that to you. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. From verse 18. And all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself. He had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Look at this. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. In other words, God was not counting their sins against them because Jesus took the penalty, he suffered the penalty, the punishment for their sins. Let's read that to them from a, a new version, like the NIV, for example. Use the NIV. Look at it. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. So God is not counting your sins against you. You sinned all right. But God laid the charge on Jesus, put the punishment on Jesus. And now he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Wonderful. So you understand who this Jesus is, what he came to do. Jesus, the Christ, was full of God. He had life in himself as God had life. Go to St. John's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 26. Hear the words of Jesus himself. Look at what he says. For as the Father had life in himself, so had he given to the Son to have life in himself. That means Jesus had inherent life. That's amazing. Meaning that Jesus Christ had the very divine nature. Here's another thought. In St. John's Gospel chapter 10, go to verse 38. Hear what Jesus says here that's so important. John chapter 10 verse 38. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. That's extraordinary. The Father, God the Father, He says, Jesus wants you to know. He says, I want you to know and believe that the Father is in me and I in Him. Now, this is the very thing that God wants for us. This was His purpose for creating man. So that He would be in man and man would be in Him. And so, you become a super being a reflection of God. Now, in Christ Jesus, that has become possible. 
when you receive Christ, when you are joined to the Lord Jesus Christ, you become one with Him. I'll show that to you. Now you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. You see that? You become one spirit with Him. If you're joined to the Lord, you become one spirit with Him. That's wonderful. Then even though you were born of a human being, when you are born again, this oneness with Christ becomes so supernatural that the life in you is supplanted with the life and nature of God. That's huge. Meaning that the very life of Christ becomes the life that you have. Let me show it to you. Colossians chapter 3. Go to verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. You see that? This is written to Christians. He lets the Christians know who their life is. Christ is your life. He says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall he also appear with him in glory. He's talking about when he comes back. Christ now is your life. Let's look at it. It's, it's so clearly given to us in the Bible. I'm going to show it to you in a step-by-step -step format that he gives to us. In 1 John, the first epistle of St. John, chapter 5, we'll read from verse number 11. We can read from the, from the NIV. It'll make it very simple. Let's read and see what he says. He says, and this is the testimony. God has given us. I want you to notice it's not a promise. If it were a promise, he would say, God will give us. But it says, God has done it. He did it in Christ. That's what I just read. In Christ Jesus. He did it in Christ. Look at it. It says, and this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. This is wonderful. Look at the next verse. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Blessed be God. You see, if you have Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. You have it now. Christ is your life now. Oh, hallelujah. This is the gospel. This is why we preach the gospel. When you talk about gospel, what does that mean? Gospel means good news. You see, good news, he sent us to tell the world that God is not mad at them anymore. God is not counting their sins against them anymore. And that God has brought eternal life to them free of charge. They don't have to work for it. All they have to do is believe in Jesus Christ and they can receive this life that is in Christ Jesus. Anyone who has the Son has this life. Eternal life. Let's read again in that 13th verse. Look at it again carefully. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. That's Jesus. So that you may know that you have eternal life. Oh. He wants you to know. If you believe in Jesus, the day you believed in Jesus Christ, you received eternal life. That's what we tell people to believe. We preach Christ to them. Because when you believe, you receive instantly eternal life into your spirit. Remember, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Christ becomes your life. Hallelujah. From that moment, his righteousness becomes your righteousness. You know, he gives you his righteousness. He gives it to you. God from then on sees you the way he sees Jesus. In fact, he doesn't look at you anymore with the human eye. No, he looks at you with the divine eye of Christ. He sees Christ when he looks at you. I'll show it to you. 
In Romans chapter 5 from verse 17, look at what it says. For if by one man's offense, dead reign by one, much more there which receive abundance of grace, so much grace, so much favor, and of the gift of righteousness. Look at that. He calls it the gift of righteousness. So righteousness becomes a gift. You are no longer living by your own righteousness. You're living by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Jesus was righteous before God. And he was the only one who qualified. And he gave you his qualification of righteousness. Imagine that you wanted a job. And you didn't have the qualification. Imagine that somebody gave you his own qualification, his own document. If that, was, if that were to become legal between you and whoever you're presenting it to. And you went to him and you said, I have my qualification. He looks at it. He says, this is not your name. But I see the one whose name it is. And it is true. He qualified and has 